Hello, this is Walter Leite, and in this video, I will show you how to do propensity score stratification. This video corresponds to chapter four of my book, Practical Propensity Score Methods Using R. In, in this example, we will be estimating the effect of schools having at least one full-time security guard on the frequency of harsh punishment. Um, for this example, we'll start by um, by dividing the propensity scores into strata. Propensity scores have already been calculated. Um, so here the first step, we load a data set that already has the propensity scores. The data set is called uh, SOCS.data. Um, the, and the propensity scores are in the variable P scores. Now, the, the simplest way to cut um, the propensity score distribution into strata is to use quantiles. Um, so here, in, we're going to use the function quantile to get the quantiles of the propensity score distribution to cut into five intervals. Um, five strata is, is the most common. Um, so, we will I'll show you what the quantiles are. So these are the quantiles um, 20, 40, 60, 80. And so the, the strata will be based on, will be the observations between these quantiles. Now, we, are cutting the propensity scores for the entire distribution of propensity scores. So um, the strata will have about the same number of people in each strata, okay? When we run the function cut and assign it to the variable subclass, um, and then in the next step, we'll give labels to this strata from one to five, which is what this here, is doing. Now, let's get a table of um, strata by treatment, and that's done with X tabs. And you can see that, um, for example, in the first stratum, and in, in this example, I'm using the terms stratum and subclass exchangeably. So here in the, in the, in the first stratum, we have 340 control and 18 treated. Uh, at this point, we check common support. Common support in propensity score stratification um, is adequate if there are no stratum with zero treated or zero control. So here the smallest value is 18. So we're good with common support. Now notes that there are 358 or 357 in, in our strata. So um, they are about the same size because we use the quantiles of the propensity score um, to, to cut the classes. Now, one alternative way to get propensity score strata is to use the package match it. Um, it's a package that makes it convenient because it also uh, calculate covariate balance and obtains weights for strata. So here we'll redo the, the strata using the match it package. Now the match it package uh, requires that the propensity score formula is provided. Um, that's used to calculate covariate balance, but, but also the match it package is able to estimate propensity scores if needed. Okay, so here, um, in the first step, we have select the data set just with the variables I need. It's not uh, helpful to have extra variables when you're using the match it package because if there is missing data in variables that you are not using, match it will give an error. Um, now, for here I'm creating the balance formula, and it's just the propensity score model, as you can see here. Treatment is a function of all the covariates. This is, will be used to calculate covariate balance. So I'm in the next step, I'm obtaining strata. So I'm calling the match it function. 
providing the, the formula. Now, distance is for the propensity scores. Um, here I'm providing the propensity scores. If I had just said distance equals logistic, then, um, then the match it function would estimate propensity scores using logistic regression. But here I'm not doing that, I'm providing the propensity scores. I provide the data set, method subclass means that I want propensity score certification. Now, sub by treat means that I am cutting the distribution of propensity scores based on the quantiles of the treatment, the treated group. This is different than what we did before. So before we using cut, we use the quantiles of both treated and control, which gave us a strata of about the same size. Here I'm using just the quantiles of the treated, which will give me um, strata with about the, the same number of treated, okay? Um, and once I run this, I get the stratification object, which is a, a list with many parts to it. Um, the next step, I just want to extract the data set. So I use the function match data to extract the data set from the stratification object and assign it to data certification. And I am also relabeling uh, the variable treat, making it a factor with, with levels untreated and treated. And I'm also making the variable subclass, which are the strata into a factor, um, to then get a table using X tabs of treated by subclass. And this is the table. Notice here that now, because I use the, the I define cutoffs based on the propensity scores of the treated only, I have about the same number of treated each stratum. Cobol support is adequate because no strata, no stratum have uh, zero treated or untreated. Now to diagnose covariate balance, I use the function summary, which also provides a list with covariate balance per stratum, as well as covariate balance uh, without propensity scores, which would be a baseline, and propensity, uh, covariate balance across the stratum. Um, to get the covariate balance for each stratum separately, I take one part, which is the Q table, from the balance certification object, and I want, I get column three, and assign to a data frame to create this object strategy differences. So if I look at it, it's just the standardized B difference for each, for each uh, stratum for the covariance. Now, there are a lot of coefficients here. So let's, uh, there are a lot of standardized mean differences here. So let's summarize that. So I will do summary strata differences by calling summary to the strata difference object. It'll take a look at that. And it gives me a summary of covert balance per stratum. You can see it's, for each strata, the covariate balance is not very good. Um, you know, if you're using a cutoff of 0.1, notice that most of these are, the minimums and maximums are all, the absolute value of the minimums and maximums are all above 0.1. So this is not good covariate balance. Um, I can also look at covariate balance combined all the strata, and this does a bit better. So I'll take a summary of this object here called sub subclass, which looks at covert balance combining across subclasses. Uh, and that is better. Notice that now across subclasses, the minimum uh, standardized mean difference is 0 0.01 and the maximum is 0.1. One, three. So if you use your uh, point one as a cutoff for adequate covariate balance, it's still some variables that go above it, but 
but it's pretty close. So the next table looks at how many variables exceeded the cutoff of point one, and we have all, that only two variables exceeded point one. Now there are there are two methods to work with propensity score certification to estimate treatment effects. One is to estimate a treatment effect within each stratum and then pull together the average treatment effects or, uh, or average treatment effect on the treated for each stratum into a, a combined treatment effect. And the other option is to use marginal mean weighted to certification. Uh, here in this video, I'll just show how to combine treatment effect estimates from multiple strata. Um, I will show marginal mean weighted to stratification in a different video. So to, to pull together strata specific effects, we use the library survey and we will define a survey design um, which declares that um, this data comes from a complex survey. It has no cluster ID, but it has a strata uh, and it has a sampling weight uh, that is, it comes from the, from the study. Now, and then the, the data set is called data stratification. We also define that we want bootstrapping to estimate standard errors. Um, and that bootstrapping with a survey package it can be obtained with the function RSSV rep design. And here I say that I want to type bootstrap with a thousand replicates. Okay. Now, um, to obtain means of treatment and control for each stratum, I use the function of survey by. Um, this is my outcome per, per hash, which is the percent of hash punishment. And I want means to be by combinations of treatment and subclass. Okay, this will give me this. Gives me the means and the standard errors. Now, because I'm using the survey design boot object here as my data, or as my survey design, um, the standard errors here were obtained with bootstrapping. And, and uh, the, the function here, survey B says that I want this to be B. So it gives me B's over here in this column and standard errors and the standard errors were obtained with bootstrapping. Um, so now for the, the average treatment effect on the treated within each stratum, you just need to subtract the means of treating the control within each stratum. Um, that can be done through contrasts. So here I have a quick earlier object pulled effects and using the function survey contrast um, and using weights to obtain either the ATE or the ATT. Now, um, these weights are Explain more detail in my book, Practical Pace Score Methods using R. The, the weights reflect the number of individuals in each stratus compared to the total number of individuals. Um, now, for the ATE, we use the total number of individuals. Um, so the weight is the number of individuals in the stratum divided by the total number of individuals. And for the ATT, the weight is the number of treated individuals with this stratum divided by the, the overall number of treated individuals. Um, so with these weights, and, and also notes at the signs here, because I want to subtract the treated minus untreated for each. So the weights are applied in this order here, going from top to bottom. Um, so if I say minus 0 0.5, 0.5 is the, the weight for strat one, 
Um, it, in this case, it literally means that 50% of the data is E stratum one. Uh, and here I have minus 0 0.5 because this is the untreated group and then 0 0.5, which is the treated group. So they, the weights cancel each other here with E, but that will allow us to obtain the mean for each status. So the, the, the sum of the weights is always zero uh, for contrasts. Uh, and it will give you, it will give me an overall mean. So if I do pull the facts here, I get the ATE and the ATT with this error of the ATE. So that's how you do professor's score stratification uh, using the match sheet package and the survey package, accounting for uh, sampling weights uh, and to get the ATT or ATT.